This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine, Gloria. She lives across the street next door to her sister, Betty. Now, I'm not one to tell tales, but this tale is too juicy to keep to myself. From the beginning, when Gloria and Betty were little, Gloria was a bit prettier than Betty, a bit smarter, a bit better at everything, even though she was a bit younger. And Betty was always a bit jealous. More than a bit. When they were in grade school, Gloria could have been the school spelling champion. But when she was ready to spell the final word, Betty whispered to her, There is no P in pneumonia. Gloria took her big sister's advice, spelled the word incorrectly, and Gloria lost. That's how it went all through grade school, which is why the sisters became known as Gloria the Good and Betty the Bad. And wouldn't you know, Betty heard about the nicknames and became even more jealous of her sister. In high school, there was this Jack something or other, quarterback, student body president, quite a dashing young man. Not at all surprising that he asked Gloria to the prom. But Betty told Gloria that Jack had the flu, and then she told Jack Gloria was sick. So Gloria stayed home all alone while Betty went to the prom with Jack. One might ask why Gloria maintained any relationship at all with her older sister. Truth is, Gloria felt sorry for Betty. Sorry that her sister was so consumed with jealousy. But finally, after all those years of seeing how unhappy Betty was, Gloria felt relieved when Betty bought the house next door. You see, Betty's house was a bit bigger than Gloria's, a bit more lavish, and it had a lovely garden. Now, Gloria thought, Betty would have nothing to be jealous about. The first thing Betty did when she moved in was join the garden club. I'm sure she did it so that she could show up Gloria. And dear sweet Gloria was happy to see her sister's jealousy fade away. It was replaced with gloating. Betty got a ribbon for her magnolias and always wore it when she'd see her sister. Betty won a trophy for her begonias and put it in her window where Gloria would always see it. And Betty won a plaque for her petunias and actually nailed it to her front door where no one could miss it, especially Gloria. You would think with all these awards, Betty's jealousy would have disappeared, but no! I suppose jealousy was so much a part of Betty, it would never go away. What happened next is so Betty. She got herself a dog, Snippy, a nasty little creature who would slip into Gloria's garden and dig up her flowers. Some people, including me, suspected Betty got Snippy to be sure Gloria's flowers would not survive and possibly win a prize. Betty's success with flowers grew. She entered citywide contests, area competitions, and provincial flower shows, and she won them all. She had so many awards and ribbons and trophies, they covered her entire front lawn where everybody could see them. Betty entered the national flower competition, and she convinced Gloria to enter too. She wanted the whole world to see how much better she was than her sister. Gloria kind of knew what her big sister had in mind. But she went along anyway. That's how nice Gloria was. You see, Betty spent all her energy and all her money cultivating the most magnificent rose imaginable. Secretly, she conferred with botanists, horticulturalists, and every other ist which was against the rules. But Betty was not about to let rules stand in her way. The result of all Betty's work was a rose so lush and rich in form and color that there was no question she would win the national prize. The day before the judges arrived, Betty let her snippy into Gloria's yard to dig up any chance, slim as it was, that Gloria could win the contest. The next morning, Betty awoke and turned on the weather report to see if there'd be enough sunshine to help her rose look magnificent. And there, on the news, was Gloria, holding a great big old bone, like one of those bones you see in documentaries on the Discovery Channel. It seems that Snippy had dug up an extremely rare brontosaurus bone in Gloria's yard, and there was Gloria getting all the attention, along with a check for $20,000 from the museum that bought the bone. This was a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine, my neighbor, Gloria the Good, who was off basking in the Caribbean sun, while her sister, Betty the Bad, finally gave up trying to be better than her sister and spent the rest of her days watching Snippy bury all her trophies. This is terrible. Oh.